Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Faith Walk 101. We are so glad that you could join us. Well, the big day has come. We've got it all, don't we? <laughs> We've got the food. It's running over, isn't it? And once we get full, we got the bed that we can lay on. Oh, my friends. We got the TV that we can watch. All the celebration. You know what? Sometimes we just go overboard. Why do we do that? Why do we just full steam ahead? My friends, we got food. We've got plenty to eat. You know what? It's just falling at our feet. But, you know, there are people in this world, they don't have the things that we have. And we should really be thankful for that. But what is it about us that when we do something, we just can't stop? We just go overboard, full steam ahead. We just stuff ourselves, and then when we can't get no more in there, we just wait a little bit, a little while, and then we go back. Yes, it's nice. I like food. I like to eat just like anybody else. But my friends, we, during these holidays, we want to have a balance. But first and foremost, everything that we do, we want to make it about our Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes when we get together and we start to have fun, we dismiss the fact that the only reason why we are still here, the only reason why we are breathing his air is because he has allowed us. But I want you to listen to something that Solomon wrote in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, the eye is never satisfied with seeing. <laughs> We're never satisfied with seeing. The more we see, the more we want. Isn't it? What is it about us that we can never be content with what we have? The eye is never satisfied. What we see, it wants more, but more is never, ever enough. So we chase after things without understanding the purpose, the meaning behind it. That's what we do. We chase after of it. And once we get it, we want more of it, more, more. We're greedy people sometimes. You know, this gathering, when we come together, we eat like a bandit, you know, and it's left our minds stranded. <laughs> it's in a place where there is no commandments. And there is a commandment about stuffing ourselves, eating too much, moderation, balance, my friends. I know it all looks good, but let's try to have some self-control. That is the fruit of the Spirit. But Solomon says the eye is never satisfied with sin. But Paul said... I have learned in whatever situation I'm in, I have learned how to be content. Can we do that? Can we be content in whatever situation we're in? Well, I hope we can practice some self-control. We chase after things without really understanding the purpose. And we long to understand, but we can't without God. We cannot understand a lot of things that we do without God. Why? Because he created this world. <laughs> this is his world. I know man thinks he knows so much and he has cornered the market on wisdom and intelligence and knowledge. But no, my friends, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, the creator, is the only one that can really help us to understand why we chase after stuff, emptiness, and why we have no purpose in our lives, why there's emptiness in our hearts. Only God can tell us these things. And that's what Solomon writes in the conclusion. He, in the, he says, the whole conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Have a reverence for, for God. You know, a lot of people, you know why a lot of Christians uh, disregard God's uh, commandments a lot of things that the Bible tells us not to do. The lot of, a lot of things that the Bible warns us against. You know why Christians, I'm not talking to the world now. I'm talking about people who are confessed Christians. You know why we ignore it? Because we have no reverence for God. We don't fear him. My friends, we must get to know God and uh, trust him. And that's what Solomon says in Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. But in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 19, Paul says, 
The wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. It's foolishness in his sight. He catches the wise by their craftiness. The wisdom of the world is foolishness to God, my friends. We cannot understand ourselves or anything that's happening in our world without God. We can't do it. And so that should be our main focus, to tell others about Christ and the coming of real peace, my friends, real peace, a real celebration. And we're celebrating now because we have Christ inside of us. But my friends, this uh, holiday where you celebrate with family and friends, I ask that one, that you look to the meaning of it. Why are you coming together? And I ask that you take something other than food, take something of value of yourself and give. And uh, by telling and encouraging other people, make and establish and keep together good relationships by saying good things, encouraging one another. This is so valuable, so important when we come together, my friends. Where we can lay these things aside, enjoy one another's presence, and look forward to the next time that we come together. That's right. And we're talking about uh, well, the only way we can really enjoy this feast, my friends, the only way we can enjoy the feast is to put our Lord Jesus Christ first. I really believe that. And when we do that, the peace that passes all understanding will enter into our lives. And what we want to do is pass that on to other people. It is such a wonderful thing when we can, whenever we can come together and to celebrate and to share and to fellowship. And what we want to do most and foremost is encourage and love one another. That is such a great thing. The Bible tells us, uh, Paul talks about um, the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit we cannot produce. Only the Spirit of God can produce it. Only the Spirit of God. Now, we can fake it. We can fake like we love people. We can fake like we care. We can fake like we're being kind. We can give like we're generous. But only the Spirit of God is genuine. Only the Spirit of God. And he puts this, those fruits inside of us. Only the Spirit of God can produce these fruits. And here are the fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And what holds it all together? Self-control. Continue to join us on Faith Walk 101 as we talk more about these things. I hope you enjoy your celebration with your family and friends and practice self-control by letting the fruits of the Spirit work through you. Thank you, my friends.